Right, now, it is time to introduce my first guest proper, as we say. Um, I'm glad that uh, Johnny got a great reception there when he started his ho-ho-ho patter, uh, because the guy we're bringing on now, I've not been able to get an offside, and I've been dying to get him on the show. Fucking dying to get him on the show, to be honest with you. But could never get him. But anyhow, I think you know who it is now. He's best known in television as BBC Scotland's travel correspondent. He's uh, been to Mexico, Monaco, Hong Kong, everywhere except Love Street. <laughs> While Hugh McIlvany got inside the mind of Alex Ferguson, this man gets right up the arse of Alec McLeish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your friend and mine, Chick Young. <laughs> One, uh... <laughs> How I get out here before midnight, eh? <coughs> lovely place you've got, Tam. That is, it's lovely. Last time I saw curtains like that, I never saw my gran again. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, check. It is great. I, I know for a fact I'll never see my granny again, eh? <laughs> Sorry, I've still seen her. <laughs> Ah, well, it's good she's finally got somebody at any age. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chick, it is good to have you here in person. Yes, Although there's a wee, I heard one one down the front, oh, it's no fucking Jonathan Watson. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, Chick's all right, dearie me. Now, there's a lot of things I need to ask you about tonight, because you're the man in the know. You've got a uh, transfer window, you've got the dire state of Scotland, clubs and administration. But the first thing I need to ask you is, what the fuck's the script with Dougie Donnelly's hair? <laughs> <laughs> it is horrendous. What's going on there? I don't know, I can't understand why MD in television would want to dye their hair. I think it's absolutely nice. good. <laughs> <laughs> but Doogie, Doogie has been a, a fashion victim, a hair victim. I mean, I remember the moustache Doogie had, that caused a few smiles. Remember the alleged moustache he had a few years ago? And the best description I heard of that was that something the BBC said, it was, BBC said that it was like Doogie gained a blowjob to a caterpillar. <laughs> I don't know if MD in here's ever given a blowjob to a caterpillar, but. I know, I think Aye, all right. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. You know, you know what, you know what, you know what annoys me? You fire, you fire into Doogie, it's always me, it's in the papers, isn't it? Alleged stories with women and all that. Doogie Donnelly and Rob McLean are never in the papers. Let so me... hang on, what do you mean alleged stories with women? You mean they're really men? <laughs> <laughs> That's an exclusive. They kept us quiet anyway, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Donnelly and McLean got away, and I'll tell you a story. They were playing golf a couple of weeks ago. And they get up the, they get caught in between a, a, behind a lady's two ball and they're at the third or fourth hole up the golf course. <laughs> That's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> and they said they were taking forever these two girls to play. So Dougie Donald says, I'm going to fix this. And they were way up the, the course to the girls. They came back two minutes later and he was really red faced. And Rob said, What's the matter with you? He said, It's the most embarrassing thing. He said, You'll never believe this. He says, One of these women's my wife and the other's my mistress. And Rob said, I'll fix it. He went away up and he came back two minutes later, purple face. And he said, hey, Doogie, it's a small fucking world, isn't it? <laughs> Excellent. Now, Scotland. Oh. Scotland, we need to bring you back down to earth and talk about that. I mean, you, you were out in the fairies. What was it like, really? Uh, you'd have liked the birds. <laughs> you'd have got one there. <laughs> it was, uh, I don't think, I'm the... <laughs> I'm the eternal optimist, uh, Tam. We're playing against Iceland next month, and I think we can take them. There's a wee bird behind the, the checkout that's a good midfield player, you know? <laughs> 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 and I was going to ask you, because you've slagged Bertie See, all night. you always start starting the things about birds or checkout, <laughs> don't you? It's a, it's a Bert, personal fantasy. I was going to bring wee Bertie tonight, and he said he'd like to meet you, and he was coming up here tonight, and he actually got done, he was driving up in the car. I, I, I was all over, he's still here. Well, what happened, actually, he was... Moved. <laughs> He was on the M8 and he was doing 110 mil an hour and he was pulled over by Strathclyde Police. But the guy had a bit of sympathy, he said, it's yourself, Betty, off you go. The wee man said, fuck me, what have I got to do to get three points? <laughs> <laughs> now, Chick, it's no awe, doom and gloom, because uh, Rangers are back top of the league. So I got to do with me. Come on, that was to you up. No. Right, why do people think you're a Rangers supporter? That wee bastard Watson. Right. <laughs> Actually, 
So you really are a, you're a St Mirren fan, aye? Yes. If you stopped all the, if you stopped working for the BBC tomorrow, fucking fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> <laughs> if you did stop working for the BBC tomorrow, you would, you would go down and watch St Mirren every week, aye? I would, and I hope they get you before they get me, but aye. Right. Aye. Have, yes, you, have you a rough idea of where they play? Aye, no. <laughs> well, it's handy for the airport, isn't it? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> aye, okay. Right, so you're then, you're a St Mirren fan, okay? Now, uh, but you're also, obviously, you're first and foremost known as the BBC man. How long have you been now with the BBC? As far as I remember, it's about 14 years. Why? 14 years, aye. No, I'm just wanting to know, in all that time, what, first of all, has been the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you on air? I tell you, there's been a, <laughs> there's been a few. Where the fuck do you start, eh? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, tell us tell what you did last night. Oh, I tell you, <laughs> This time I broadcast gear on Radio Clyde, you made a call. I'm a podcaster, it. don't fucking well, push right. it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they keep sending the checks. So I remember Radio Clyde, and, and I mean by Derek Johnson, who I love there. Derek and I had a, had a good partnership with Radio Clyde going for years, but I remember I, Derek's, I couldn't work with Derek any longer. I remember the end came when we were in Paris for a, for a World Cup game, and he asked me what the French for cul de sac was. <laughs> that time, the 14 years and years before, uh, you've met loads of famous people, but uh, one of them that we saw you way on the telly, just, uh, when was that, a few months back now, was Rod Stewart. Did you see the show with Rod Stewart? That's a trick thing, right. So what's Rod like? He's a wonderful, warm, caring, sensitive human being. No, I mean, it's, I, I just like, all oh, the, the tabloids fire into it to Rod and all that, and Penny says he can only do it twice a day. Fuck me, Tom. Twice no, a day. No, you're all right. <laughs> To my granny. If you're ambitious, this <laughs> is 58 years of age. What age are you now? 51 years of age. Right, okay. Because Chick was just telling us there that a lady in his life came up to him last night and says, How do you fancy going upstairs for a fuck? And Chick says, Oh, I could never do the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rod Stewart, and I know another guy that you met, a guy who's your hero, your number one hero, was Pelly. My, my, my soccer god, the greatest. My, he's do, have you seen it? He's doing adverts for Vi Viagra. Can you believe that? Uh, maybe give somebody Scott that'll stiffen up the back four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually a shipload of Viagra uh, sank last week in the Atlantic and it brought up the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you do, this is one question I was wanting to know, do you actually do yourself a Jonathan Watson impersonation? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll, I'll tell you... I mean, your Ian Duncan Smith is outstanding. <laughs> it's fucking uncanny. It's very politic. Now, we, Johnny, uh, who is such a magnificent performer, he's, he's actually made... He, Jonathan Watson, there is, he's not in my house, that wee bastard Watson has <laughs> made my life hell ever since the, the whole only an excuse thing began, and there's not a street I can walk down in this country now without somebody going, <laughs> And it's getting in my fucking tits, honestly. <laughs> tell, you, tell you a true story. I'll tell you, a true st <laughs> I'll tell you an, absolute, an absolutely true story. Um, I used to get my car sponsored by um, the Shields Rover over on the south side of Glasgow. We decided about a couple of years ago to do uh, an advert uh, on Radio Clyde. I know there's one or two people in here who don't listen to Radio Clyde because of the initials, but uh, we decided... <laughs> We decided to do this advert, and the advert was a simple 30 second advert. Uh, and the idea was to exorcise the ghost of, of Johnny doing me. And with, uh, the, the script involved me pretending to be Johnny, pretending to be me. It was a 30 second script which began with me saying, <laughs> This is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here in the, like, in the Rover showroom, etc. And I swear this is true. Again, at the recording studio, I had the headphones, the microphone, the guy who was producing the advert said, Off you go, and away I went. <laughs> this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. Guy said, cut, do it again. I said, that was going to be okay. He said, do it again. I said, what was wrong with it? He said, do it again. I said, that was going to be a one-take wonder. I said, what was wrong with it? And the boy said, you haven't got the laugh right. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fucking laugh. <laughs> that wee bastard watching is making more money out of being me than I'm making out of being me, right? So let's hear how it should be done. Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome back on stage, please, the magnificent Jonathan Watson.
<laughs> yes, this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. Finally getting the chance to talk about what really matters in Scottish football, the old firm. The old firm being, of course, Glasgow Rangers. Yeah. The Gels, the Teddy Bears, the Sons of Williams. And then. Now, I had hoped at this point to talk at great length about the glorious Glasgow Rangers and all their magnificence, but sadly, we have to go over to Parkhead, to Celtic's all-seater potato bowl. <laughs> and Martin O'Neill. No, seriously, I'm... <laughs> I'm not joking. Seriously, Ed, it was on a knife's edge. It, it really was. I, I'm not joking. Right up until we scored the eighth goal. <laughs> but you, you have to move on. Forget the past. And stop going over in your mind again and again. That last minute penalty awarded to Juventus last year, which I, I have to say, I've, I found extraordinary. <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> and shocking. <laughs> shocking. Shocking. <laughs> Although, I have to say, at the time, I didn't actually see it. <laughs> Let me tell you, Martin, I saw it. <laughs> and I pissed myself <laughs> out. Does that mean I will go to the big bunny fire? Father? Tommy Bums. <laughs> score so many late winners. Well, I can tell you, it's, uh, it's because it... <laughs> At Celtic Park, our philosophy has always been the same. Keep going right to the end and hope and pray that the good Lord will look down from on high and reward you. <laughs> by making you a bunch of jammy bastards. <laughs> It'll be difficult, but if we work hard and speak to the right people, I'm sure we'll be able to convince everyone that Rangers' new away tops are tangerine, not orange. <laughs> Folk have criticised Rangers for not spending, but our financial position is improving. I recently bought four blinds for £99. <laughs> There's a big job to be done here. I don't have all the answers, but if I do need support, I can always count on those who still have the interests of Rangers at heart, like my mentor, Sir Alex. <laughs> 